Okay, this video is going to be about adding fractions. First, let's go ahead and take a look at our steps. Remember, when adding and subtracting fractions, we must have common denominators. So that's the first thing we will look for. Step one, do the fractions have common denominators? If yes, then you actually go to step two and keep going. If no, you will need to stop and find common denominators. Step two is to add the numerators and keep the denominator. And then step three is to decide if the solution is simplified. If yes, then you're done. If no, then you're going to pull out factors using giant one. Now, if you need to pause the video and take notes, go ahead and do that. Then start the video when you're ready to look at the examples. Okay, let's take a look at example number one. If I notice, I have one sixth plus two sixths. So I'm going to ask myself, do the fractions have common denominators? Well, I have a six and I have a six. I have common denominators. So yes, I get to go to step two. Step two tells me to add the numerators and keep the denominator. So I'm going to go add one plus two is three. And I'm going to keep my denominator of six. Now I'm going to go to step three. Is the solution simplified? So I have to think, is there going to be a number that goes into both three and six? And no, it's not simplified. So I need to pull out my factors. I think about the numbers that go into three. I know the numbers that go into three are three times one. Then I look at what goes into six. I know that six is also three times two. So if I take a look, I've got a giant one I can take out. Once I've taken that out, I'm left with my answer. My answer is one half. Now I'm done. In example two, if I take a look, I've got three ninths plus one half. My first question is, do the fractions have common denominators? Well, this fraction has ninths and this one has halves. So no, I need to find common denominators. So I need to find my least common multiple. What number do both nine and two go into? So I'm gonna take a look at my chart. I'm gonna look at my nines first. I've got nine, 18, 27. So now I'm gonna look at my twos. I'm looking for a nine or an 18 or a 27. Oh, there's an 18. So two does go into 18 and so does nine. So 18 is going to be my least common multiple. Now I'm gonna use my giant one to make equivalent fractions. I know that nine times something is 18, so that means nine times two. I'm gonna write my giant one as two twos. Then three times two is six. In order to get from two to 18, I also need to multiply by a giant one. Now what is two times what is 18? Two times nine, so I'm gonna write my giant one as nine ninths. One times nine is nine. Now I'm going to add. I'm going to move on to step two. I add my numerators, keep the denominator. Six plus nine is 15. Keep my denominator of 18. Step three, is the solution simplified? Well, I take a look at this and I see that there is a factor that was going to come out. I think about 15 and I know 15 is three times five. So I'm going to write as three times five. Then I take a look at 18. What goes into 18? Well, three goes into 18. I know that three times six is 18. I notice that three threes is a giant one, so I can take it out. I'm left with my answer of five sixths. Let's go ahead and go on to example three. In number three, I have three and four sevenths plus two and seven eighths and I'm going to add these two numbers. I take a look, my first step is to look for common denominators. I notice I have seven and eight, they are not common. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look for my least common multiple. Start in the sevens and the eights, and I'm gonna look for numbers that look similar, that the same, oh look at that, they both go into 56. So 56 is gonna be my common denominator. So now I just gotta think about what giant one is gonna help me get there. Seven times what is 56? Well, seven times eight is 56, so my giant one is eight eighths. 
4 times 8 is 32. Now, what does this giant one need to be? Well, 8 times what is 56? I know 8 times 7 is 56. If you need to use your multiplication chart, go ahead and do so. So that means this needs to be 7 sevenths. So 7 times 7 is 49. I've got some big numbers here, so if I need to do some adding on the side, I will. So now step 2, I'm going to add my numerators. I've got a 2 plus a 9, which is 11. I'm going to carry my 1. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus another 4 is 8. Now I keep my denominator, which was 56. And I have to remember, I still have whole numbers over here to add. 3 plus 2 is 5. Now I can't leave my fraction in this form. Notice I have a mixed number, but my fraction is improper. I have to turn this into another mixed number. So I'm going to do that. Remember, we look at how many times does 56 go into 81? Well, I know it only goes in one time, because otherwise this number would have to be over 100. But I... I'm going to have to do some subtraction. I don't remember. 81 minus 56. 11 minus 6 is 5. 7 minus 5 is 2. So I'm left with 25 over 56. Remember, always keep the same denominator. Now that I've turned this into a mixed number, I have to add it back to my whole number. So I have 5 plus 1 is 6. And 25th, 56. Now there's no numbers that go into both 25 and 56, so I am done. And that is adding fractions.